Waterman fountain pens. I already did a review of this pen. Today we're going to take a look at the Waterman Charleston as I told in the other video Louis Edson Waterman constructed the first functioning fountain pen. The brand was established in 1884, so it's the, the oldest uh, fountain pen manufacturer. And today we are going to examine the Waterman Charleston. And now let's take a closer look at this Charleston pen. You will see this from nearby with another camera angle. This is the way you open and close the pen. This looks like a turning knob, but it is a cartridge filler. You can use these large fountain pen cartridges, but you can also use these standard size fountain pen nibs, or as I do in this, in this other waterman fountain pen, I use a standard converter. <coughs> I already did a video on this pen. Okay, back to the waterman Charleston. You can see the 18 carat nib is very small compared to the size of the pen. We compare the pen in size to a very standard pen, the Pelican 140. We can see this pen is a little bit smaller. The, the nib is even a little bit larger on the Pelican. Okay, this is the Waterman Charleston. And now we close up. We see the Waterman logo, the clip, a simple center band which goes right into the cap. And one moment, you can see the threads over here. Close the fountain pen and can see a nice Art Deco motif on this 18 carat fountain pen nib. Waterman Paris and the center band again in Art Deco motif, the Waterman name, and here it doesn't say Paris, here it says France, the threads, and the end ring. And the 
close the pen and the Waterman logo. Pen. Let's try the thin and the thick strokes. This is without pressure now. With pressure, as you can see, this pen is not very flexible, but it has a nice dis distinction between thick and thin strokes. Few more writing examples.